Now, I know many of you are watching have varying levels of experience writing code, but speaking from my own experience, learning to build plugins is actually a perfect way to learn some basic programming concepts that can ultimately have a big impact on your own design work. So, for our next activity, we have a special guest who's going to help you get started. Let's welcome Raji to the stage to host a rapid fire session that we're calling Plugins in Five. Hey everyone, uh, thank you so much for uh, attending my little session here. We're calling Plugins in Five. I am Raji King, I'm a designer advocate and also developer advocate that loves to build me some plugins. And that's what we're gonna be doing right here on the stage is building a plugin live. First up, I wanna say thank you to Kelly and Prasanna for setting us up with the initial stages of how we can get started with a plugin and download that plugin directory to our desktop. Now let's talk about setting up your environment. First up, I would recommend grabbing VS Code. It's a free editor, and we'll be able to start writing our JavaScript and our code in here. What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna open our folder that Figma downloaded to wherever we put it. In this case, you can kind of see the anatomy of the files and what that plugin looks like. We're gonna open that up in VS Code. Now, what I recommend now is to go through that readme file. It's a markdown file within that directory. There's gonna be all the instructions that you need to be able to get going. You gotta install some packages and get up and running. Just read through that file and it'll do a step-by-step -step instruction to get you going. Now let's talk about the anatomy of a plugin. So a plugin's gonna have a couple of key files of interest to you. There's gonna be three files here. UI.html, that's where we're gonna put the HTML, let's say it's text areas and buttons and things like that into the plugin window. Then we have code.ts, that's gonna be our TypeScript where we put in Figma commands that can manipulate things on the canvas and do things like magic in Figma. Now, there are two separate environments. We've got the plugin window and we've got Figma. And in order to make them communicate, we're gonna be using post message and on message to send data back and forth and communicate to each other. Lastly, we we're gonna look at manifest JSON. That's gonna be where we're gonna put our settings so that we can change the behavior of how our plugin will work. Okay, we can't just start coding a plugin. We need to ask ourselves, what are we solving? So for a design system conference, I thought, how about documentation? And better yet, what if we were able to add, take a video and attach it to our components and let that data live with our components? That way, any of our designers that go in to use an instance of our component can actually view that video. Now, we've seen a lot of people in our community recording looms and things like that to explain how to use the components. But even better, what if we put it in Figma so you could watch those right there? Okay, let's dive in. I'm a little nervous because I've never done a live coding demonstration like this, but let's get going. Okay, so we've got everything set up. The first thing that we're gonna need to do is actually run this build for this code. So in VS Code, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to terminal run build task. And we're gonna use this one, TSC watch. And what this is gonna do for us is it's actually gonna always build and run. And then when we save, the plugin will regenerate so we can just save preview, save preview like that. So I'm gonna run the build task. Here we go. Now. I'm going to use a quick command with command slash on my Mac to attach video. This is the plugin that I actually created with Figma. And so now I can run it right here. So I'm gonna run it, but we've got a little bit of a problem. It just says running attach video. Why is that? Why is it not working? Well, that's because we haven't given it any commands yet. So let's give it a few commands. And we're gonna pop over here into our code TS. And this is gonna be our TypeScript file. Now I've stubbed out some comments here and I recommend doing that. It's like, try to think about what it is and the step-by-step -step process that we're gonna use for this plugin. So I've got a little bit of a structure here. Well, what if this plugin is in play mode? I'm playing a video. So I have something here called figma.command, if the figma command is play. Else, we're just gonna assume, if it's not playing, then we're in the mode of trying to attach this video. So that's gonna be a little bit of our structure there. I've written out a few other things here, maybe some handy functions, just stubbing those out and creating a little bit of a small function for this. And then also we have uh, some embeds here. And these are iframe embeds from Loom. Just didn't wanna to have to go out to Loom so we can use them right here. Now, we said we would talk about manifest. Now, we're just gonna add a few things to this file and I've already added them here, but I'm gonna explain what they are. I wanna have buttons in Figma. I want this plugin to be able to put a button on the screen in Figma so that my design system 
users, the, the consumers of the system, can click play or they can click attach a video to this. So what I'm going to do here is create two relaunch buttons, one named play. I'm going to give it a, a name of play video, like a nice title, but the command will be play. And then another one, attach video with the command of attach. This is going to feed directly into this figma.command. Now we've got that set up. Let's do something with the attach command. So we're going to come into this attach video area. And I'm just going to see if we can like, I want to just do an initial thing, like a hello world thing. I just want to show a window. Like, let's do something simple. So I'm going to do figma.show UI. Now, I could use the UI HTML here, and that's where I would put my UI, but I'm not going to do that today. We're just going to put simple HTML right into a string. So I'm going to use this template literal here. It's just a string with some back ticks, and I'm going to put a hi schema. Thanks so much for watching me, y'all. Uh, so we're just going to run this plugin again. All right, attach video. Look, we actually have a plugin. Look at us. We're gods among men. We can do this. We have created a plugin window. I feel all kinds of power when I write plugins and write code. Okay. Now I'm getting a little tired of going to command slash and then typing in attach video and constantly doing this. I want to give myself like a nice little hack to give myself a button right now to just fire up this plugin with just a click of a button. So I'm going to come right to the very top here and I'm going to do figma dot root. Now that's going to be the root node, which is actually the entire figma file. And I'm going to do a special command called set relaunch data. Now remember what we called it. It's called attach. So I want to set the relaunch data to say, hey, we're going to run the attach command whenever this gets, uh, this button gets clicked. So I'm going to do attach. I could also add a string here to have, have more information. I could put in here more info and we can see how this works. Now let's run this plugin and it should run that command. So when I run it, oh my goodness, I have a button. I have now influenced the UI of Figma and there's my little more info text. This is working amazingly. All right, let's move on. Let's follow our little guide here. It says show a window to get the embed code from the user, then send it to Figma. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to put in a little bit of my own HTML code right in here. So I'm going to put in a text area. Text area. Uh, maybe I'll give it a placeholder. Maybe I won't. For now, we'll keep it simple. Uh, and we'll just put in some maybe some embed code. We'll put in some dummy copy here. Embed code here. Great. Uh, now I can just fire up this plugin anytime I want. Look at that, a text area with embed code in it. Let's actually add a button now. Now we're gonna be pretty sloppy with our HTML, but that's okay. Right now, we're just trying to build this thing out and prove out, can we do this? So I'm gonna hit button, and we'll just say button has a label that says save in it. So now we'll go ahead and do this. All right, we have a save button, awesome. Let's keep coding. So I'm gonna put in a script tag because I want this save button to do something. So I'm going to put in my script tag here, and in the script tag, I want it to do something. I want the button when I click to do something. So I'm going to do this. I'm actually just going to make it easy and put in on click on my button, and I'm going to put save embed. And we're going to run that function on click. Now we're going to create a little function right here. This function is going to be called save embed and we are going to do something with this embed code. So how can we get the embed code out of here? Pretty easy. We're just going to do this. We're going to go let uh, the text field, or we'll just call it the embed field, equal. And we're going to put in document. This is going to be where we use our browser APIs, document.create, or oh, sorry, query, selector. And in this code here, we're just going to say query, the selector of the text area. So now we have a reference to the text area. And what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to put in console.log. Let's put in that embed.value. That'll give us the value out of that. So we're just going to test this and see if we can console.log this out to the screen. So when I click the Save button like this, look at that. It has embed code right there. What if I put in more text? It actually outputs that to the screen. So I'm going to use a little cheat here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab something else here, a little bit of that cross-communication. Remember we talked about how this plugin window is going to need to communicate to Figma. Well, I don't want to have to type all this stuff out, so I'm going to use this post message, parent.postmessage, and it's going to send 
my embed.value here. Well, that's great. Let's go ahead and run this code to see how handy this button is becoming when I hit save. Problem here, it says the message from the UI was dropped because we didn't handle it, we didn't receive it. That's what this code is all about here. We're going to do figma.ui.onMessage. Now this is gonna be a function and it's going to have a message in it. We're gonna receive that as a parameter. It's gonna come from this plugin message here. So let's see if we can receive it. I'm gonna put console.log message. Let's do this. We're gonna run the plugin again. We're gonna hit save. Now we don't get the error. It's actually communicating. We're actually in Figma now and we have that embed code. So what are we gonna do next? Well, we need to go ahead and actually set this embed code on a node. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to find the user's selection. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually just going to select something and I'm gonna share a bit of code with you here. We'll grab a snippet just to keep things easy for us here. So we can do something really cool. We can actually tell Figma, hey, can I get the current page and the selection? And the first item in the selection, as we know we can actually select a lot of things. So what does selected node look like? Oh my goodness, I can actually run it right in Figma and I'm seeing that it's a component node. Well, that is perfect. We're gonna use that code and I'm gonna go selected node equals this selection. We have the node now. Now what do I wanna do with this node? Well, I wanna take that data, the embed code, and put it on and save it into the component. So we're gonna grab some other code here to get ourselves uh, a little bit sped up here so we can demonstrate this plugin. So we're gonna use that selected node and we're going to set plugin data. Now this is gonna save it right on there. We're gonna save the embed code right onto the node and we're also gonna do ourselves a little clever trick, which is we're also gonna add another relaunch data button of play and attach to this. Let's see how this works. I'm gonna run the plugin right here, attach video, embed code, save. This is looking good, it looks like it worked. So now we just need to see what can we do? Can we get the embed code? Let's get it and play something with it. So we can see now, let me do this, let's do this. We're gonna run this and I'm gonna run this right here. I'm gonna save it, all right. Okay, all right, so we're coming to time here, but I wanna speed up this development process and I wanna get us into a place that we need to. So I'm gonna walk us through a couple more steps here. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get that embed code right off of that node. So the way we'll do this is we'll actually grab this selected node. Remember that code here, the selected node there, and what we can do is we can actually get the plugin data right out of it. So. That's what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna be able to put a button on this, a play button, and then we're gonna get that code, and then we're gonna create a different plugin window to show that. Now I'm gonna fast forward us, imagine this is like a baking show, and I put the turkey in the oven, and I'm pulling it out only two minutes later, turns out uh, it's great, but we can add a lot more finesse to this code. So what I'm gonna do now is put in some of this same code with a little bit more finesse on it, and we're gonna come back and we're gonna run this attached video plugin. Now you can see with this that I've actually got a little bit more styling. I've also got my iframe for that loom here and I'm going to attach the video right here. Now what I'm gonna do is come look at what we've done. With that set relaunch data, I've actually got this play video. I've got this attached video where I can actually edit the iframe and now I can play this content. You can see here that I've got the switch working for play versus attach and I've got this all working here now what we need to do is our last step. What happens when I publish this? And this is really the magic of setting plugin data. I'm gonna publish this set of my components and now that button has that data on it, on that main component. Now coming here to this file, this would be a designer's file where they're using those components. I see that there are component updates available. Well, what did I update? I added that plugin data to the button. So I'm going to review it, I'm going to update, probably a pretty, pretty familiar process for you all, but I'm gonna come right here. What if I was a designer and I wanted to know more about this button? I've got all my variant properties here, but guess what I also have now? I have a play video button. You can imagine how you could scale this and put it into everything. So 
all of our design system files, everything. I'm gonna hit play video. And now we can see, we could add all kinds of videos and use this plugin to be able to attach data, not only embed code data, but maybe it's design system data or all kinds of things that we want to live on this. And then now we have tutorials and videos that are able to assist our design system documentation and they go out to every single instance of our components. Thank you so much for walking through this with me. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna publish this to the community to share with you. Wow, thank you so much, Raji. Uh, I love how you were able to break down a pretty, really useful use case for a plugin into some really simple steps that I hope people can take away and use in their own process. Yeah, thanks so much, Raji.